the questions whenever you are ready. Okay. Okay. Um, the question I was asking in the comments was, what's one thing that you're grateful for today? I know your morning just started, but has anything happened that you can share that has, um, has given you gratitude? I'm, I'm two things grateful for air conditioning. Um, because I was like, Ooh, it is toasty today. Um, and then I'm also very grateful for coffee. I went to bed very late last night and I was grateful to get my cup of coffee. My first of what I'm sure will be four or five. Um, <laughs> I'm also a coffee drinker myself, so I can relate. Yeah, I mean, it really does affect the mood. <laughs> so yeah, very grateful today. I just, I just saw somebody write in the comments, I'm grateful for pizza. So I feel like people are relating to that coffee, that coffee connection, but same, same, same but different. Honestly, yeah, coffee and pizza really, you know, I wouldn't eat them <laughs> together, but I'm just as grateful for pizza. Right, right. That's how you know we're all connected. Yes. Um, so what does a morning look like for you? How do you start your day where you get your, your mindset right? Honestly, it, it kind of changes every day. Um, I'd say traditionally and typically I'm a person that's like, I'm sprinting out the door all the time. Um, I'm, I'm up, brush my teeth, try to look decent and I'm like sprinting. I'm always like, oh no. <laughs> um, but I'd say as of this year, I've tried to make it different where I'm up, I do like a quick skincare thing, have a cup of coffee, and I always listen to a podcast while I'm getting ready. And it just tries to get my brain thinking like as soon as I possibly can. Okay. Um, so like by the time that I'm, you know, in an interview or, or a conversation or in the studio, I'm fully there and present. So it's like this warming up period where I can be easy on myself just doing things that warm me into them. Sure. That makes sense. Sure. Do you have an evening routine, like a way you wind down kind of on the other side? No, not, not necessarily a routine, but I, at the end of every day, I find that I need to take time for myself. Um, just like completely be alone, maybe. Um, and do whatever I want to do. And that could be watch drama or just like listen to music or have a glass of wine or whatever it is. It's like the moment of my time to be really gracious with myself and give myself time to kind of reflect on the day. Um, and I realize that if I don't do that, I end up really stressed. Um, and so that's kind of what I do on a daily basis. It's usually in the form of like, put some music on, um, watch maybe something on TV for a minute or listen to a song and then I'm off to dream world. That's great. That's great. Yeah. Dream world's where you want to be after a long day, but sometimes, sometimes it's not always easy to get there. If we have, a, you know, a ruminating mind or, a, or, you know, kind of still stuck in the, the yeah. daily grind. So, well, I think, I think the other thing is like, oftentimes I find myself, like spiraling or like overthinking things and like thinking back on my day I'm like oh my god did I say something wrong or did I do something wrong or whatever and oftentimes like I'm completely fine most times it's like completely fine it's just you need to go to bed yeah. and you just need to have a fresh start right and I think I I have to tell, I have to tell myself like you go to bed get a few hours of sleep you know, wake up and everything's gonna be okay yeah and it always is so sleep is our friend and it's weird for me to say that because having like building my career and getting to where I was, I literally thought like sleep was the enemy because I was sure. like, I need more hours in the day right. to do more things, to be more accomplished or to go after a certain goal or whatever. But um, it's, it's really wild how important sleep is yeah. um, in, in being healthy, both physically and mentally. Yeah. I think you just touched on a really great point. I think we're seeing now, in society that burnout is real. And we used to live in a world where it was glorified to burn the candle at both ends, right? Yeah. To be at the office all night or to be to be exhausting yourself, you know, 
and and it was kind of a badge of honor, right? Look how much I'm working. Right. Can you talk a little bit about how you have been able to navigate such a busy career and you're on tour and you're working on mindset, you have so much going on. How, what, what's your recipe for staying balanced? <sighs> it's hard. I mean, finding balance is a very hard thing. And, and I think, like you said, for a long time, I think we're finally getting to a point in culture and society where we could talk about being like, hey, being busy constantly is clearly not a good thing. Mm -hmm. But like you said, it, there was a moment where it was like a badge of honor, like you define your success or your metrics for success by how busy or booked you may be. Mm -hmm. um, and I think in like entertainment, it can be particularly gnarly because really if you're booked and busy, that directly translates to your income. Um, being able to go to an event or show up and perform or be in a project, like that is how we quantify success. And so there, we are at odds in terms of how we think about our mental success and our emotional success and our physical success versus our standards for career success. Um, so it's like, it, it's a weird place where things directly compete with each other, but for me, I'll be the first to say that like I was not good at it at all. I I wasn't good at balancing things right. until I had moments of burnout, until I had moments of being in a really bad, bad place for me to take a step back and say, I need to remove myself from the situation mm -hmm. or set up guardrails so that I don't put my, myself in danger again. Right. And, sure. and for me, what I realized was like, I thought I was invisible, invincible and I was able to do whatever all the time and it worked for a certain period of time, but when the burnout starts hitting, um, it was hard because I have to be on camera, happy, excited, really jazzed to be doing something that I don't care right. about. And that right. after extended protracted period of time really gets to you um, in many ways. The other thing is I think when you are stressed and when you have anxiety or if you are depressed or if you're going through something, and you're still pushing yourself just as hard through through really intense work, your mental health has direct correlations with your physical health. And so that impact shows up through illness. Um, and for me, it showed up through a couple of things. I had a panic I had a couple panic attacks where I thought I was I thought I was dying. I had what I thought was a heart attack and I thought I was gonna die. Turns out it was a panic attack, stress, sleep re induced. And then I also had a, during that same period, right before that, I had like, I think it was like gastroenteritis. Normal food or drink coffee mm -hmm. or drink any form of alcohol, anything acidic for like three months. So all I ate was like wow. oatmeal and porridge wow. and water. Um, and then on top of that, I have like disc issues from like in my neck, in my lower back, and those would flare up. So I would lose feeling in my, my hands and parts of my arm, but all throughout this period, I'm dancing and I'm singing and I'm on TV, I'm doing all these oh, different things. Goodness. And I can't go on TV and be like, I'm in so much pain. Um, at least I didn't feel like that was an acceptable thing to do. And so I'm saying these things only to, to come back to the point and say, yeah, taking care of your mental health, make sure you're sleeping, make sure you're eating right regularly. Mm -hmm. These are things that are incredibly important in preventing burnout, not only emotionally, psychologically, but physically. Like your body, when you're not able to function, right. you can't do anything. Right. So. Wow. Thank you for sharing all of that with us. Um, also, for those of you who are just tuning in now, because I saw we had a lot of people jump on, um, Eric Nam is sharing all about his journey with mental health. And you, as somebody who's touring on the road, you have very narrow margins for this type of thing. You don't, to mm -hmm. your point, you have to get on stage, you have to go to an interview. You can't, you can't call out sick. You can't, you know, kind of go camera off on a, on a Zoom meeting. You have to be there. So um, I see even people asking in the audience, like, how do you time manage? How do you... Like you're, you know, you, you're, you're living the life, right? Through the lens of audiences, this dream life as a, 
as a pop star, but you're a human on the other side. So you mentioned that it sounds like your body was giving you so many signals, like mm -hmm. slow down, you know, like the flare ups, the, the stomach issues, the panic attacks, those are all signs that something was out of yeah. whack. So do you see that now as a turning point? Did that change something for you? And can you tell us a little bit about what that was like? Yeah, um, I, I think a couple things like, one real thing, you're not able to do anything and that physically, emotionally and mentally, psychologically. And so that should be the priority and as humans, I think we're all very inclined and maybe wired to want more and to want to have more status or things or money or whatever. But you have to also like kind of, you know, be realistic and also kind to yourself. Like really get, you know, ask yourself, why do I really want this? And why do I really need this? And what can you live with and without? I think that is kind of boiling it down to the essence of what we're going yeah. after. Yeah. And I, I think also in that also applies to work. I think a lot of us are, we want to do our best at our jobs. We want to be perfectionists. We want a photo or an asset or a, a reel or whatever it is to be perfect. But also knowing that it can, there's a chance it's not, it just isn't. And that's fine. And you just have to be very gracious right. with yourself. And there are things that we do as creators or as artists and we're like, if this isn't the color, the perfect color of salmon, whatever, <laughs> it doesn't work. Right. But also knowing that like for the majority of the people, the 99.99% .99 of people who are watching it, they have no idea. They don't right. care. Right. Um, they don't it, care if it's the right salmon. No, they don't. And so having that taking a step back and being very kind to yourself i think is very important so for me again it was let's be kind to yourself take care of your health be a little more lenient in what you're what you're doing with your work and not everything has to be 100 percent. obviously try your best but don't beat yourself up over it right. and so when i started to change my mentality that way it really allowed me to breathe it allowed me to take time for myself and say, let's take that energy and put it towards maybe sleeping a little more or going to the gym or listening to something that I really want to. And, and for me, I think the way that it became easier is like taking care of my mental health isn't necessarily talking to a therapist. It isn't meditating. For some right. people, it's the perfect thing to take care of your mental health. But for a lot of people, therapy is too expensive and it's not you know, something that's very accessible. For me, I was told that I was not allowed to get therapy when I was in, like, when I was in the label wow. system. And so it was like, okay, what can I do? What can I utilize to really take care of myself? And just being very mindful and self-aware of what works for your body specifically, I think was the most important thing. Um, so that was a very long-winded answer, but that's kind of how no, I address it. You, you touched on some really great things. One thing that stood out was that you said that you weren't able to access therapy um, in the record system that you were in, the label system. So what were some of those things that you were able to access when you started feeling panic and sick? Um, I think for me, the, the biggest thing is like a great support system, mm -hmm. a group of friends, uh, family. Um, not, I know for some people like, like I don't, I don't have that. And that's part of the reason I have stress or anxiety or depression. And, and yeah. I, um, but for me personally, it was, you know, there is a one-on-one -on -one therapy with like a professional license. There. There's also a lot of therapy from people who are like minded or people who support one another. And for me, I think that's where it came from. It was more of like a group of friends who we all had our different challenges that we were going through, but we were very open and honest with each other uh, about what we were feeling and the difficulties we were going through. And mm -hmm. even if it's not a solution, speaking and talking about your emotions and verbalizing them and being able to point at a situation or a condition and say, this is what it is, let's mm -hmm. label it. 
so we can then start to manage it or like collectively try to come up with solutions. I mean, that was my form of therapy, um, which is, it wasn't like an intentional thing, but looking back at it, that was what happened. And so when people think, oh, I need therapy, but I can't afford it, I think it's, who can you look to around you that loves you, that cares about you, or you have something in common with that you can have these conversations with, with it, which is just as important um, and valuable. Um, I think the power of community is so important. I think we saw that in the last couple of years that people were able to lean on virtual communities to supplement or even in some regards, you know, when things were, you know, at, at the height, kind of like take the place of a physical community. So what, for the people watching, what's one, what's one way that our viewers can show up for their communities? Like what is one small thing that people can start doing a little bit better to be an ally or a support system for those around them? Um, you know, I think it's, it's almost so simple, but it's very much, it's just like, just listen. Mm -hmm. I think that's mm -hmm. it. Just listen. And, and I know it's hard because I've been in situations where I have people just emotionally completely dump on me where I'm like, this is so much information and I actually don't know how to deal with it. And I don't know what the right proper response is, but more often than not, it's just, they needed to get it off their chest and say it out right. loud. Right. And they wanted to, somebody to just be there to acknowledge that what they were saying was being heard. Right. And I think that is oftentimes more than enough. And I know we live in incredibly busy times and we are so connected digitally, but not so much uh, in person sometimes. Mm -hmm. And it, because of that, it's, it's, it's harder to even set those bridges up so that these competitions can happen. But if you're able to be present and say, hey, if you ever need anything, just talk to me. Right. Um, that, that is more, I think, more than enough to get the conversation rolling and the ball is in their court right. rather than yours. Right. Um, so just being um, generous with your time and energy because it, it is incredibly taxing to sit there and listen to things that may be very difficult for somebody right. to go through. And so it can be, seem simple, but it's actually so important and so valuable. Right. Um, so yeah, it, it doesn't, it doesn't have to be something grandiose. Right. That's great. That's great. That's a good piece of advice. Sometimes just being there so that people don't feel alone in their journey or that they're the only person that's that's ever experienced you know whatever it is grief sadness anxiety mm -hmm. just having somebody to listen to that's a great way to show up um for for your community can you talk a little bit about how your music career has been shaped by your mental health journey uh yeah i mean i think just most clearly uh, a lot of the stuff that i write and I perform, it comes from my personal inner experiences, um, be that pleasant or unpleasant. And so this album that I'm working on right now, um, I'm currently working on an album. It, I have a single, yeah, I have a single coming so soon. I mean, like so soon. Oh my God. Um, yeah, next month I have music starting to roll out. Um, but, and then we have like a bunch of songs coming, just like, it's a wave of music. It's incredible. But oh, hard yeah, to hear so first. Right. Yeah, <laughs> hear first. I'm very, very excited about it, but it was a, it was a really big journey in terms of writing this album. Um, because I kind of finished, I was in the middle of my last tour when I started writing it and I would walk in. And like, what do you want to write about? And I was like, nothing. I, I think I was burned out. I was very tired. I don't know. I didn't know what I wanted to talk about. Um, and then I started to like really be, you know, really have a lot, a lot of introspection on it and to really sit there and think like, why do I feel this way? What is it that I'm really desiring? I am on tour in I'm doing 60 shows around the world. My, my music studio, I'm doing all these things. But like seemingly 
I don't feel whole or complete, or I don't feel completely, um, how do I say this? Accomplished, I guess. Like there was a lot of things like internally that I was like trying to work through. And so that was kind of like the starting point of the album. And we started writing about that, about, you know, we want so much for ourselves and we desire so much for ourselves, but when is having more and more and more enough? What are the things that really drive us as people? What is, when do I feel vulnerable? When do I not like myself? When do I, um, you know, really hate myself and love my, like all these different emotions, we were able to bottle them up into songs. And so it was a very, very, in some ways, therapeutic and cathartic experience, but also very challenging because I had to walk into a room with a bunch of writers and be completely honest and vulnerable about what was going on in my life. And it's weird to walk into a room with people you've never met and be like, hey, how are you doing? It's like, oh, I think I have like horrible anxiety and I, I can't deal with like this thing that I said and I've been spiraling for the past 24 hours. But going back to being a good listener and, and having that kind of safe space, that's what I was doing. I was walking in and be like, I'm gonna emotionally dump on you guys. I'm really sorry, but I think we can write a song on it. And I would just go and they'd be like, thank you for sharing that. And then everybody would go around and be like, I feel the exact same thing in this experience or this experience. And from that general consensus where everybody's like, we've had this experience of like being really sad or being really happy, let's write this song. Wow. And that's kind of how almost every song happens. So for me, in the most literal sense, mental health and wellness is directly manifested and like displayed in my music. Wow. 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 I mean, you that's like truly the sign of an artist. Like artists have a unique ability to channel, right, the swirls of our of our minds and transform it into something that is beautiful and that is art. By the way, so much love and support in the comments when you mentioned the new album. We have super oh, really? here who are with us right now. Everyone is very excited. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you all. Thank you to my nomination. Yeah, we have um, yeah. a lot of new music, a new tour, all the things happening. So uh, wherever you are, I see comments from all over the world. I think I will be going to almost all of these places. So wow. I'll see you soon. Wow. I, someone just commented, art is expressing your emotions, which it sounds like is exactly what you're doing. And you walking into, you know, a studio session, kind of like word vomiting, and then giving other people the permission to share what's going on in their, you know, in their minds creates this kind of like unity. And then from there, you create art like that is beautiful. And I think the world could really benefit from a lot more of that. So thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, no, I mean, it's, it's weird that that's become the norm. Um, and, and I think it's a good thing. Again, going back to like, group therapy um, and that's that's kind of like the form in which it, it manifests for me um, but yeah no I'm, I'm really excited about it and the album and the music but also like great grateful for the people around me that have been patient enough to listen but that's you know to, to kind of pivot to mindset which is like what it's a company that my brothers and I set up. It's a platform, a wellness platform. And that's kind of what we really stand for. Having artists talk about these things in an open way to kind of mm -hmm. encourage and normalize these types of conversations. And so um, if you go to like Mindset by Dive Studios page or the channel, there are like all these artists, musicians, actors, et cetera, talking about these things in a very public way because um, it's valuable not only for the artists ourselves, but also for fans, I think, who, sure. you know, find a lot of healing and meaning through our music or the stuff that we do, but to literally, you know, instead of us being kind of what I was referring to through that vague lyric, I can literally just say, I was having a panic, panic attack and this is what I'm talking about. And for us, that's like kind of the best way of using our platform for good. Um, and that's 
what I think what I've been trying to live by for the past few years. Right. And I feel like that is why you have the most loyal nomination following is because you show up exactly, you know, all of you, whatever mood, happy, sad, whatever it is. And then you give that to people and you give them the gift of seeing what vulner vulnerability looks like. And then in turn, they can be vulnerable with you. So it's just creating ripple effects. So that's great. And I, I do want to switch gears because we are cel celebrating Asian American Pacific Islander month this month. And I wanted to ask you, um, as, a, as a Korean American, what has your experience been um, as far as your heritage and how has that shaped you? Um, yeah, I am very proudly Korean American and it's something that, you know, I've spent 10 years in Korea now. Um, something that I never really heard of Atlanta. Um, I think right. I grew up in a place where it was not very diverse and I was you know, there were not many Korean or Asian American people around. And so for a long time, I think growing up in the South, it was like, uh, I probably don't have a lot of the opportunities or I can't really imagine or dream myself in being places or performing on TV or doing things because you have to be able to see it to kind of dream it. Um, you have to see yourself visibly represented to say, I can also be a superstar or the president or X, Y, Z. Um, but so when I was younger, I was like, oh, I'm, I'm very back because I don't see myself visually represented. But these days, thankfully, um, I, I feel like we have more inclusion and representation in media, in movies, film, TV, music. Enough is at parity where it's an equal. No, it's not. But that's what we're trying to strive for. But I, I say all that because in the past i think there was a point where uh i was like this is this is great but i also feel very held back but now i think of it as like a superpower where mm -hmm. as a korean american i am very very korean but i'm also very very american mm -hmm. and i have an experience that many only like children of immigrants or third culture children can really, really resonate with and relate to. Right. And what we thought of for so long as a disadvantage is now an incredible advantage right. because we have an understanding of multiple cultures, of multiple languages. And we're able to really pull from the best of all of these sides to bring our, self, our best selves to the table in whatever situation we're in. And so right. that's something that I'm very, very grateful for. Um, and something that, you know, I, I, I think is still new for us to understand and verbalize, which is why I'm like stuttering my way through. Um, but it's it's really cool. It's really great, and and I'm I'm very very proud and um, of, of my heritage. Yeah, I was <clears throat> I was listening for all of those um, tuning in. Eric, uh, I think it was two weeks ago, had an interview with the U.S. Surgeon General, which is awesome. And I heard you talking on that podcast about your relationship with your parents who immigrated to the U.S. and kind of like what that the, what that discussion was like when you were like, I'm going to actually put my consulting uh, job offer on hold and try out for this kind of once in a lifetime, you know, singing opportunity and what, yeah. you know, kind of culturally that dynamic was like. I thought that was a great story if you want to share it with the audiences here too yeah so um my i guess my job job when i graduated from college was supposed to be a strategy consultant at deloitte and i was like ah, i'm gonna take a year off and i'm gonna go do other things and i ended up long story short i ended up on a tv show kind of like the american idol meets the voice of korea and I ended that, I had a label deal. And I was like, hey, I think I'm gonna sign this. And my parents were like, what? We put you through four years of expensive American university and you have a job at a very, very nice firm and you're gonna turn that down to potentially perhaps maybe try to be a singer. This is not acceptable. And so 
it was a lot of pushback. My mom in particular never liked the idea. And, and even until a few years ago, she was like, when are you getting a real job? So, <laughs> yeah. Hopefully she it, come around now. <laughs> she has come around now. It's taken a long time. She is now on our side. Okay. She is nominated. But um, it was, you know, it wasn't the easiest journey because, and I understand it's like, Go, jumping into being an artist or a creator is scary. It's it's very right. much like you don't, there is no right answer and you just kind of have to roll with the punches and, and trust your gut and your instinct to create music or art or whatever it is um, and, and think that this will be, you know, accepted and loved by so many around you. And so right. it was hard, but here we are. Right. And now you're we back it. in Korea, which is, yeah. which is the full circle experience you're, of all of this. It, it, we are living in multiple full circles, right. uh, but yeah. Uh, well, just being mindful of our time, I'll, I'll ask you one last question. Um, if you could go back and give your, uh, your younger teen self any advice, Okay, I think I might have broke up for a second. It was if there was if I could go back and give my younger teen self advice, what would it be? Is that the question? Yeah, got it. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think it would be mm, a just go for it. Like really, if there's something that you want to do and something that you need to do, go for it because I think you know living with regret of having not tried something may be the most painful uh painful thing you don't know until you try right having said that i think it's very very open to criticism and be very 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 open in understanding that you may not you do not have all the answers that is fine but that's all that you can learn from um, and be very kind and gracious to yourself throughout that process. Um, because you don't know anything, you will have your heart broken, you will be rejected, you will work so hard, you will work so hard, be released to the world and have nobody care. And that's just the reality of developing yourself as a creator or as an artist, and it's painful, but if you are already aware of that going into it, then you are already set up to say, I can roll with the punches and last longer and fight harder and have even better chances for success in whatever it is you're trying to achieve. So that's kind of, I think, the advice that I would give to my younger self. Wow. I feel like that's advice that just hit home for me and hopefully everybody else listening. <laughs> Well, thank you so much. Is there any any final comments, anything we didn't get to that we want to shout out before we wrap up? Um, um, no, I just want to say thank you so much for having me and for being such a great host and for the thoughtful questions. Mm -hmm. um, and thank you to, you know, Meta, to creators, to Meta Prosper. And also, um, yeah, I have new music coming starting next month. I have a tour. It's a massive tour, my most ambitious tour to date. And then, of course, with my brothers, we have Dive Studios, um, which is just a lot of really fun content. You can go check that out on the Dive Studios space. And then Mindset, which I referenced a little bit earlier. It's Mindset by Dive Studios, but we have a lot of great content from your favorite musicians and actors and artists talking about all things mental health. Um, or you can go to getmindset.com, which is maybe just really easy to remember. So... A lot of great things coming, um, but really excited to have had this conversation during Mental Health Awareness Month and Asian American Pacific Islander Heritage Month. So thank you so much <laughs> for having me, and this has been a pleasure. Thank you so much. I hope you have a great rest of the day. Drink at least you know one or two more cups of coffee. Of course. And I can't wait for the new album to launch. Me and everybody else listening, thank you so much. And everyone tuning Thank in, you. this is to reconnect, to reconnect, and we'll see you next month for a new episode. Thank you so much, Eric. You are the best.
Take care, everybody. Thank you. Have a good